South Africa, the relationship between South Africa and Rwanda. There are people who are saying that they are not where the relationship or the working together and the collaboration should be. In other words, uh, the relationship is not healthy. Mm. We know that the issue of the visas, which the two leaders agree that it must be resolved, it hasn't been resolved. And people are saying it emanates from those people who are from Rwanda, who are in South Africa, who were killed, and government having a hand, and therefore there's that mistrust. When, when, when was that? When were they killed? Some years back. Okay, yeah, because the reason I was asking that is it wasn't to test you or anything. I actually wanted to mm. put things in the right perspective. Uh, the, the, the problems with South Africa have been actually long running. I think uh, they ended with uh, who came after Mbeke? President Jacob Zuma. Yeah, there is a period of. Uh, uh, President Khalima Motlante. Uh -huh. Then. The, uh, yes. So the relationship to start limping started way back, even before we started having uh, an issue of presence of Rwandans in South Africa. In fact, what I remember, uh, during that period, uh, which you, you remember the years? Anyway, let me, let me not put it. Halima Mutlante? Yeah, we took off that. that 2008 to 2009. Yeah, that, that's when it st stopped, more or less. That's when the good relationship started. Before that, I will give, give you something which is outstanding and speaks for itself. Mandela, Mbeki, and on up to that period, we had very good relationship. Not only good in other senses, but very beneficial. We have most, a lot of our young people who were taken, were allowed to come to South Africa and study, and uh, many of them were victims, others of genocide, others were even, even children of perpetrators. <laughs> we sent a big number, it is there are hundreds over time. And because South Africa facilitated... This and city talks. Absolutely. And, and also facilitated how these people should come there and uh, they were almost paying uh, fee, school fees as, as at the level of South Africans, which was a wonderful thing. There was no issue of a visa, there was no... And it was a huge contribution to what we have today, in fact, in terms of progress. These young people, anyone you meet here who is... Uh, Mm -hmm. Around 30, over 30, we tell you they have been to South Africa to study during that period. So it, it, it's a wonderful thing. And then after that, we started wondering what was going on. Up to 2010, uh, then there is this man who died in South Africa, who used to head uh, the intelligence. The intelligence. Well, the first question is, why would somebody, even who was heading intelligence here, be in South Africa as a refugee? It is both ways. Well, here you can ask, why did he run from here? Yeah, but that, that doesn't that, that, that justify has, that he be killed? No, 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 I, I haven't said that. <laughs> I'm just explaining, I'm telling you the story. Then, uh, so that has, so an explanation, I want to go into details of how, what he did and so on, and then went to South Africa. Uh, and I think when he went to South Africa, he also started, uh, he added uh, to the toxic relationships that <laughs> everything started going really terribly bad. And in fact, he even started organizing from there and so on and so forth. 
So the issue of being killed is just singled out because killing, of course, significantly is, is causes outrage. And but who is even the one who proved that he was actually? Who, where is the evidence? Who, where is the story coming from? Who can stand and say, yes, I'm sure this is the one who did it? Because we even, in, 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 by the way, engaged South Africa to say, let's actually follow to understand what happened. At some point, government uh, in South Africa at the time accepted, and then the next day it is like, for them, they just took a position, and that's what we should also take. And there was no investigation allowed. To, why, why wouldn't they? Why would they have not wanted investigation to take place? That we were willing to engage with them on and go into the facts. So, but they decided to veto what it was and. That's it, what everybody must believe now. So that continued. Uh, and by the way, it has continued up to this day, even more intensely this time. And we have been sharing constantly the information, the worries we have about what these people have been involved in. Now, we started even seeing People from far, like right, the ones we talked about, Europe, European countries and others, these activists around the genocide issues and the turning Rwanda into, you know, the worst country to live in, and that's why they don't live there, relocating to South Africa. So which means there is good ground for them to go and operate from that. That has been growing with the time. But can't you engage the current president, uh, President Ramaphosa? We have. I have. You ask him. You ask the other members of government. He's coming to the commemoration. <laughs> I'm very happy that he's coming. <laughs> Maybe we shall have another level of conversation. Absolutely happy that he's coming. But we have, uh, let me tell you this, and why I was earlier um, blaming uh, Sadak leaders to, to have acted in the way they did. You know, uh, we are involved, Rwanda is involved in uh, Mozambique. Yes, Cabo Delgado Cabo region, Delgado. where they are insurgents. Yes, when we were asked to participate, to try and help in that situation by Mozambique, and we agreed. I don't know whether people are aware, whether they, they might be, because I have even said it before. Before we got involved in Mozambique, I found it important to, one, tell Mozambicans that, by the way, you should also talk to your colleagues in SADC, so that when we come there, there is uh, no question around that. I could have easily said, let's go. But I found it important to engage Sadek. In fact, not only did I discuss it with the President of Mozambique, I even discussed it with the President Ramaphosa. I went to him. We had a meeting in uh, in Paris. There was a meeting there of to do with the f financing and so on. Many countries, I remember very well. Yes, many. I sought him out, particularly for that. I went to him and said, I've been approached, da, da, da. we are thinking of uh, doing that, uh, helping uh, in the situation in uh, Mozambique. And our demand has been, we want to be clear with SADC countries that we are coming and why. And in fact, in the same period, I, I, I know for a fact, even the president of Mozambique and South Africa met to discuss the issue that he was raising. Few weeks after, 
uh, uh, letters were written, I have records here, saying Sadak is clear, you can't deploy. Why was I going through all that? Because, I mean, first of all, in Mozambique's sovereignty, they could even have said, no, we, we, we invite whoever I want to invite, which is fine. And, and also for me to participate with a friendly country like Mozambique, who have invited us, he could say, well, we have the invitation. invitation, so we are going. But I found it important to actually make sure that all these other efforts were made to involve others. Why couldn't it have been done even in DRC? Why did it happen like there was rivalry, there was a misunderstanding, there was... A... Why? Reasonable leaders, why would they behave like that? This is, has been my question. In fact, I, 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 I'm saying this publicly, painfully also, because <laughs> maybe some people expect that these things should not be for public discussion, we should be talking quietly to each other, no, no, but uh, I'm saying it to express my, even my frustration about the issue. So uh, 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 are the same people who we, all of us, who are behaving like this, are, they, are we going to be the ones to address these problems that are complicated? that involve uh, our countries for one reason or another and blaming each other and doing that. We can't address it like that. Are you still hopeful that you can find one another on these issues with South Africa? I, I hope so. And all we need to do is to keep trying. <laughs> because what else should we do other than trying? I hope there is. Because, and, and it is not, we are not talking about an insurmountable problem. <laughs> we are not talking about a problem that is that is too complicated. I don't think so. We just have to have uh, our right mind. Political right will place. to yeah. solve the problems of Abs the continent. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, Mr. President, it's ordinary Africans who are suffering. That's very true. Absolutely true. I completely agree with you. <laughs>